Hello and welcome back to the Duke of Scottish Shoes here in Geneva. I'm joined today by Francois Aubert to discuss Middle Eastern developments. So welcome back to the studios. Thank you for having me back. So let's talk about Iran first, first off. So how could the re-entry of Iran in the global oil market affect the neighbouring Middle Eastern countries? Well, we are talking about a country that is under sanctions, at least US sanctions, uh, for, you know, since 79. So that's quite a long time. And we are talking about one of the largest uh, oil reserves in the world. Um, so that will affect in terms of volume, obviously. Uh, that said, uh, there is uh, a need, a huge need to renovate their drilling facilities and their oil facilities in general. And we are talking about $100 billion to invest or more than $100 billion to invest. So, of course, it will have an impact on the oil price, on the oil market, but also on all sorts of investments. And countries are trying quite quickly to access that market. Actually, as an example, Switzerland has just released some of the sanctions against Iran, notably for petrochemical products. So uh, it's a real change in the market uh, and it's an important change in the market and it's a change probably for which the Iranians are ready for a long time now. And you mentioned oil price there, so oil price has been below and around $50 per barrel. So with that in mind, what effects could this have on growth and on bank liquidity levels? I mean, first we have to understand why oil price is down. Uh, because the, the reason is probably notably strategic. Um, the, clearly, uh, the Saudians um, don't want the oil price to be too high uh, because they have that U.S. competition, uh, the fracking oil. And what we see in the U.S. now is a number of companies going under uh, because, you know, they are heavily in debt and with the oil price at 50 or below, they can't survive. Uh, so there is a kind of natural elimination of the competition. And also it won't help a country like Iran to come back to the market, you know, at $50, uh, while two years ago we were above 100. Uh, that said, that comes with a cost. Um, we know that the Saudi, Saudi Arabia needs a barrel at more or less $80, $85 a barrel not to lose money, not to use their reserves. And actually, Saudi Arabia announced that it's returned to the bond market, so they are going back to debts. Um, Kuwait, another big player here, uh, announced a um, deficit of uh, almost $9 billion, which is the highest ever. To put that in perspective, we are talking about a country of 4 million people. So that is absolutely huge. Uh, so we know that uh, you know, Qatar has huge spendings. Last time I came here, we discussed the, the budget for the, for the World Cup. That is astronomical. So these countries need to spend a lot of money. And, and with the oil price at that level, it's costing them money for now. So we can expect the oil price to go up at some stage. The, the, of course, the question is when, and that will be driven mostly, I guess, by political factors. Absolutely. So you mentioned Kuwait's deficit there and the Saudi stock market reopening to investors. So what could this mean for um, the Middle East and what is it looking like in terms of developments? Well, the first thing to realize is the Saudi market was forbidden to foreign investors for a long time. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, you could have exposure through derivative products to the Saudi market. So uh, the Saudi market was somewhat open to, to, to investors, at least exposure to the Saudi market. Uh, that said, what we see now, and you have these numbers on, on the screen, is the, the, uh, uh, the growth is going down. I mean, look at the Saudi numbers. It's pretty impressive. It used to be 10% in 2011. Uh, we're talking about real growth here, then it went down to 5.4 and now we are around 3 and uh, it seems that the forecast is around 3. So, and it's Saudi is of course the biggest example, but it's the biggest country of the area. But all these economies are, are struggling from that oil price. So there's a, a stage where they will need to, to move and again the big, biggest move is um, with, the, with the oil price going up. Another thing we can see is um, some real estate market uh, lagging for now, um, which is another sign of something happening. And uh, we also see uh, uh, the private financing coming, becoming more and more popular. Actually, we have a record high in the MENA, which is Middle East and North African countries. Um, in MENA, private equity and venture capital activity in 2014. So we have a lot of private investment coming because people still have money. 
But the fact is, at the country level, the countries are currently suffering from what is their main source of income, the oil price. Absolutely. Well, Francois, thank you so much for coming in and sharing your expertise with us today. Thank you for having me. Well, that's all that we have time for today. But for all the latest Jukascopy updates, do keep clicking back. Goodbye for now.